Why does this US election matter so much to India and the world? Why is this such a significant election this time? Irfan Nuruddin there in Georgetown, tell us, why is this election being seen as such a landmark one? You know, all elections have consequences. And in this case, you have two very different viewpoints, not just about domestic politics, but about America's place in the world. Uh, Donald Trump, we've seen the record already, right? He was president after all for four years from 2016 to 2020 and showed an inclination really in his rhetoric to put America first. But what that translated into was maybe a disregard uh, for America's traditional commitments to its alliances, a willingness to uh, sort of upend the playbook in terms of global governance by embracing tariffs, uh, for instance, criticizing the World Trade Organization under his leadership. America withdrew its support for the World Health Organization at a terrible time, given that we were on the, uh, in a global pandemic. Uh, you have Trump's very vocal uh, sort of advocacy for Russian positions, maybe, in, particularly in the context of, um, you know, of the Ukraine war. So you just have somebody who's really stakes a very different position about what America stands for in the world. Mm -hmm. And in Kamala Harris, you have a much more of a conventional center-left politician. At the end of the day, as you mentioned, she is vice president. So the Biden-Harris administration will, if she wins, turn into the Harris-Waltz administration. But we would expect a lot of continuity over there, in particular doubling down on American support for NATO and for Europe, a continued pressure on Russia as a significant strategic uh, opponent, and maybe much more continuity, but with some room for maybe negotiation with China. Mm -hmm. Trump is just a wild card. And so when it comes to India, I think India arguably is in a favorable position for both candidates in that India is seen as a bedrock of American uh, foreign policy in Asia. But with Harris, we could imagine what the contours of that look like. With Trump, it's a wild card. We don't know whether that means Trump says India has to be our main partner in opposing China or whether Trump decides that his anti-trade, anti-immigration rhetoric uh, puts India in the crosshairs and suddenly he decides that, you know, Indians are stealing American jobs and levels a lot of tariffs. So I think it really is the polarizing nature of these two uh, foreign policy positions mm -hmm. and in particular the wild card nature of Trump that makes this election so significant for foreign policy and for India. Irfan Nuruddin, you've used the word wild card four times already. Uh, let me take that word uh, to you, Jayant Krishna, also in Washington. Trump, a wild card versus uh, Harris, who may represent uh, continuity, many believe. But the world, there are those observers who believe Trump's un unpredictability is also his strength. He could perhaps break deadlocks, which seem at the moment intractable, whether it's Russia, Ukraine, whether it's the war in the Middle East. How should India and the world look at a potential Trump presidency? Yeah, so Rashdeep, uh, first of all, uh, you know, I mean, U.S. still thinks that they are some kind of a beacon uh, to the world, and, and many in the world also believe uh, that's the case. But if you look at over the years, you know, uh, you know their, their power to influence, uh, uh, you know, the decisions of nations and also resolve conflicts has been reducing quite a lot. It, it has become rather limited now. But the fact is, given their economic clout and their, uh, you know, their military power, uh, they, they are still a very, very, perhaps the most consequential uh, actor in the global, uh, uh, you know, arena. So I think, uh, I think uh, if you if you look at, uh, uh, you know, the, the, there's a huge contrast between the two candidates. If you look at uh, Trump, you know, he he's all for uh, Americanism, uh, and 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 you know, somehow with with the low uh, regard for uh, glo uh, globalism, that's that's very very clear. As the world should behave more multilaterally, I think Trump has been. Uh, you know, America first has been his policy and more of a unilateral uh, thing that he does uh, all the time. So I think this is this election is also very interesting because it's happening at a time when, uh, you know, uh, the regional powers are going their own way and they don't, they don't really listen uh, to, to any uh, major power. Uh, UN has become weak and the fact is the US remains the largest uh, funder for the UN to the tune of about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, $20 billion uh, per annum. Uh, Russia-Ukraine war, we all know which way it is going. Middle East crisis is very well known. Uh, China thinks that they are, they are second to none and, and, and they, they'll do everything to eclipse uh, US. No, so so would, a, would, a Trump, uh, president, president, would a Trump presidency change all that? That's what's been happening in the last few years, as opposed to a Harris presidency. Is it a battle between continuity and change? So I think, I think uh, uh, 
Anand, if you contrast, compare and contrast the two candidates, uh, you know, one thing is very clear uh, that Trump uh, is a bit unpredictable. Uh, he, he, some of his policies could even be divisive vis-a-vis -vis Kamala Harris, you know, who, 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 whose leadership would be more humanitarian, more, uh, I would say, uh, a more res responsible and very, very principled kind of leadership, you know, one can expect from uh, Kamala uh, Harris. Uh, there'll be a huge amount of policy continuity vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, uh, you know, from, from uh, the Joe Biden uh, uh, era onwards, you know. Uh, if you if you look at few of the critical issues in the world, let's uh, talk about, uh, you know, Ukraine. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, Kamala Harris, if she comes to power, uh, uh, her, her decisions would be and actions would be more uh, pro-Ukraine. Uh, if you look at Trump, he has, he has said that, uh, you know, he, his, his admiration for Putin is known uh, very well. He, he says that he's a strong leader and that is what he is, uh, you know, he, he admires. Mm -hmm. As far as China is concerned, uh, I would think that uh, Trump would be more uh, decisive in terms of, terms of uh, curbs uh, on China. They've already said that almost 60 percent of import duty they would, they would levy on goods coming from China. So I think I think uh, on on predictability, I, right. I I would believe uh, uh, Kamala Kamala Harris would be uh, quite predictable vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Trump. Uh, that's that's uh, okay. very very uh, clear, Rajdeep. Okay, so it's predictable more than continuity versus chain. Let's call it predictability versus unpredictability. Uh, that perhaps is why, in a way, uh, this election is so fascinating for so one because Trump is, as was just described, a bit of an outrider. Pramit Pal Chaudhary, you're with us. How do you see it, therefore? Why does this U.S. election matter so much to India and the world? How would the world order change depending on who wins? Will anything change at all? Well, there will definitely be some changes, but I will stress continuity here. Um, I would argue that the first Trump administration, the Biden administration, had remarkable spans of continuity. The U.S. position on China... Uh, in many ways, I would give Trump credit for calling out China in a manner that previous administrations had been unwilling to do. Biden maintained exactly the same posture. If you talk to the Chinese, they said, we cannot tell the difference between the two, uh, two regimes, the same tariffs, the same position on Taiwan. Um, and in many ways, I would, uh, uh, and the same argument that China, in effect, uh, is the major disruptor and major threat to the United States. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that India remains, and the Indian system actually gives credit to Trump and his first team, uh, that they were able to come out and say that, look, China has to be called out among a lot of what it does. Mm -hmm. um, where there is a difference, however, uh, where, where there is a difference um, would be in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, where Trump is very clear, just his team, if you look at his foreign policy team, one point that is consistent um, is that uh, America, that the Europeans in particular, but many other American allies, have to contribute more and have not contributed enough uh, to the defense of, of things like the Ukraine, and that they cannot continue to live on the United States. Uh, Biden has also said that to some degree, but he's much more of an old World War II, Cold War person, that America's allies must be supported nonetheless. So that is going to be a shift, and that's one of the reasons Ukraine is probably the country most nervous mm -hmm. about uh, the, the return of a Trump. Uh, what is interesting, though, what everybody has mentioned correctly, is on trade. But Trump talks a lot more negatively about trade than he actually does. Mm -hmm. The real game, as far as I can see, and when you look at people like Lighthizer and those on his team and what they have said, is that Trump uses tariffs to seek a deal. He likes to get a, he's prepared to give you a carve out, but you have to make certain concessions. Um, and we can go into what I would expect that type of a carve out to be for India. The problem is that for China, it is not clear at all that they can actually strike such a deal with Trump uh, because their, should we say, crimes against the international trade system, trading system are far right. too egregious. Okay, I interesting uh, the way you're putting it. Uh, Kaval Sibyl, your take on that first big question. Why does this election matter so much to India and the world? What, according to you, is going to be the main distinction between a Trump and a Harris presidency? I think all that has been said uh, by the various panelists uh, is relevant in this regard. Uh, it's clear that uh, Trump and uh, Kamala Harris are two very different uh, candidates uh, with very different uh, agendas. Uh, we are familiar with their agendas. In one case, uh, Trump uh, was president for four years, and we dealt with him. 
And in the other case, although she was not president, she was vice president. And she says that she will follow the policies of Biden, which she will, I think, largely. So we are familiar with that agenda, too. So there are positives and negatives on both sides, in the sense that uh, uh, Trump uh, has been uh, supportive of India. He has good uh, personal chemistry with Modi. He's been, of course, talking a bit loosely about uh, how he admires Modi. <laughs> At the same time, he says that, uh, you know, he, he's a tough guy and, uh, he, and, he, and he threatens to impose uh, tariffs on India because he thinks that we are worse than even China with regard to tariffs, something like that. Uh, so we should be prepared for some uh, unpleasant surprises when it comes to the economic side. But in other respects, I think uh, there will not be any great difference between how he dealt with India in his previous four years and now. With regard to uh, Biden or, or Kamala Harris, I think uh, there there'll be continuity of policy. There were some very, very important decisions taken with regard to on the technology side, on the defense side, uh, and uh, uh, on various areas which are very important for India's growth story. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will continue. On the other hand, uh, in terms of uh, issues of democracy and human rights and minorities and all that, uh, we may actually find that uh, there might be more pressure uh, on us. And therefore, it will be a kind of a situation where we draw closer to the United States, but uh, it will also be, uh, we will be also more distrustful of certain aspects of, uh, of uh, democratic uh, pol policy towards India or Kamala right. Harris towards India. On the whole, let me say like this, that, uh, you know, it is, the election is important for the simple reason that the United States is the most powerful country in the world. Mm -hmm. So whatever this president does or, uh, or the decisions they take have an impact on the rest of, rest of the world inevitably. And the rest of the world has not been able to cushion itself uh, from the uh, policies of the United States, uh, both positive and negative. And therefore, we'll have to wait and see how it pans out. With regard to Ukraine, uh, yes, uh, Trump says that he'll be able to solve the problem in a few minutes. I think he's being uh, uh, rather casual about the whole thing. And uh, and Medvedev, the former president of uh, Russia, the prime minister, also has said very clearly, what if we don't agree uh, with uh, what he says? And then at the same time, he says that he'll threaten Russia. So let's see what happens uh, on that front. It's not going to be as easy as he thinks. Europe is terribly, terribly worried. And Zelensky and... Uh, the Ukrainian government are actually having nightmares at the idea that uh, Trump may come to power. Right. They'll more that uh, uh, Kamala Harris comes to power and there's continuity in that policy. But if he settles the issues with uh, Russia or lower tension, it is helpful to us in, in, and the Global South in general. Okay. Interesting. I, uh, these are preliminary remarks, of course, to try and put some context to this election.